GX90. The boxy second generation Pilot was cool. It was distinct, it was a little bit weird, but that's also when Honda was making the element. The third gen was totally forgettable. Now for the fourth gen, I see what they're trying to do. They want it to kind of look like the current Accord and Civic, but it's also just got this genericness to it. Like it, To me, it looks like a baby Ford Explorer. It's, it's not bad by any means, but it's also not memorable. With one exception, this, I cannot get it out of my mind. Why is this shaped glass here? It, it makes no sense. It's not related to anything else on the vehicle. It's almost as like they had it laying around the factory and they're like, well, Gotta go somewhere. Mazda is trying to transform itself into a premium automotive brand. They don't wanna compete with Honda and Toyota. They wanna to compete with like Jeep and Volvo. And the biggest way they're doing that is by switching to rear wheel drive architecture. Well, what does that do? It improves the proportions. Now you can have more space between the front wheel and the dashboard called dash to axle ratio, this space here, and your eye interprets that as premium because now it looks like a Mercedes or a BMW SUV. Plus they can drop the V6 in favor of an inline six. They're so proud of it, they stamped it right there. It also means you can have shorter overhangs front and rear and just allows for the CX-90 to be a much better looking vehicle. Inside the Honda Pilot, likes, I really like this brown leather, it looks sharp. Dislikes, this is supposed to be an all new vehicle, yet I feel like I've seen this and this and this before. Like eight years ago, I saw all this. So it's hard for me to say this is an all new vehicle when so much is so familiar, but at least it all works great, right? No, if there's a weak spot in Hondas, it is the infotainment, the nav screen, it's just, harder to use than the competition. If there's one area where the interior of a Honda shines, it's just in the like the innovative cubby holes. They've really like, kind of just thought about, okay, what does a family need on a road trip? And you know, you've got the shelf above the glove box, you've got oversized cup holders and lots of them. The middle of the middle row folds down, boom, you've got two captain's chairs that keeps the kids separated. It's easy to get into the third row. They just really kind of like, thought about it and they, they made a great interior as far as families are concerned. I'm inside the Mazda CX-90 and it's very clear that when compared to the Honda, this is a luxury vehicle. Look at this gorgeous blonde wood, the chrome accents, you've got this cool fabric right here, but it's not perfect. First and foremost, this shifter, I'm not sure how this made it out of the design committee, but this is bad. Why? I'm in drive right now. If I want to put it in park, I'd have to push forward and then to the left. But most people are going to push forward. It'll actually be in reverse because every other car is drive to reverse. And, you know, they're going to leave in reverse, get out of the car. It's going to roll away. They're going to get hurt. It's just a bad design. I bet they changed it in the refresh. Also, a white interior on a family vehicle. Dude, my kid could have this tie dyed within 30 seconds. That said, he does seem to prefer spilling white yogurt on everything, so maybe this one will work out. But again, it's just, it's not well thought out in terms of what families are gonna use their crossovers for. It should have bigger cup holders and more of them. It should be easier to get into the third row. The third row should be bigger and there should be clever storage solutions everywhere, like the Honda, but there isn't. <laughs> Dynamically speaking, it's pretty clear the one thing the Honda team wasn't thinking about was driving dynamics. This is a bit of a slug. It's, it's a roly-poly SUV. And then, you know, look, they were focused on making it comfortable for the family. But a lot of times, comfort means it's too soft, it wallows in corners, it's not sharp, it's not pointy, you're not gonna go autocrossing with it. It just isn't happy when it's doing that. The tires squeal. Also, the engine makes a lot of racket, but there's not a lot of power. It's still a naturally aspirated V6. It's not turbocharged, it's not a hybrid, it's not that efficient as a result. The 10-speed automatic probably gives you a mile per gallon or so, but it's just not a great transmission. There's a sport mode, you don't need it. There's some off-road modes, really, who's gonna do that? What I'm trying to say is that this is not a driver's crossover.
My favorite part about driving the Mazda CX-90 is not the 340 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, turbocharged, inline-six, mild hybrid engine. No, it's the way this thing drives. Phenomenal for this segment. In fact, if I were to throw you in the passenger seat and pull all the badges off the interior, you would say, wow, I didn't know Jaguar made a three-row SUV. Pretty quick for a Jag. It's just awesome. Like in a segment where nobody cares about driving dynamics, least of all the people buying the cars, Mazda has done the unthinkable. This thing is wonderful to drive. Hats off to them. Like the Honda, I know I drove it. I know it was in the last scene. I don't remember anything about it. This, I'm gonna recommend this to people that are interested in driving dynamics, of course, because man, hats off to you, Mazda. You are not messing around. So how do you rank this one? You know, I admit it, it's tricky because we can think of the Honda Pilot as like, you know, it's a plate of grilled chicken and steamed broccoli, whereas the Mazda is much more a ribeye and some cream spinach. I really want to eat that one, but I know that I probably should eat that. The Mazda CX-90, it breaks the mold of the traditional three row family crossover. It's powerful. That rear drive platform means not only does it have great proportions, but it's actually good to drive. Plus, I, I dig the paint. The Honda, on the other hand, is admittedly less interesting and less dynamic, but it does the three row family thing better than the Mazda does. You know, as an adult, I really desire that Mazda. But as a parent, I'm able to realize that, hey, it's time to think of the children. And that's why the winner of this comparison test is the all new Honda Pilot. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.